Mike Reese with Saluki Hall of Famer Jermaine Dearman. You go from uh, big game Jermaine to Hall of Fame Jermaine. <laughs> it just rhymes when it's around you. It does. Dearman. Congratulations. Thank you. Hall of Fame Jermaine is, that's better than big game Jermaine. I liked it, man. Yeah. They both, it just has a little ring to it, man. Yeah. I like them both. Tell the, uh, tell the truth. Did you, did you expect it or uh, what? Did I mean, surprise? to be honest with you, I mean, it was a, it was a blessing and I'm honored to, to, to be in the Hall of Fame, but I didn't expect it. I mean, when we played, I just played and left it all on the court and I wanted to win. And whoever came to Carbondale, I wanted them to make sure they left what they tell between their legs. <laughs> I wasn't worried about the numbers. I was worried about that W. You guys didn't lose at home, did you? We didn't lose at home. That was far in between. I got amnesia when the last time we lost at home. Give the viewers an idea what a, a home game was like, JD. I mean, it's hard to describe in words. I mean, just the whole ambiance and the whole vibe and the whole feeling and energy of the, of the city around that time. I mean, everything was buzzing. Mm -hmm. um, when I started out my freshman year, you know, it wasn't quite as much. It was always that support there, um, but it was a different feeling. And as we won and as we built the wave and got the confidence going, um, it was just, it was, a, it was a vibe that was undeniable, you know? It's like you can go out in the city and the town and everybody was excited to be at the Saluki. Everybody was excited about basketball. Um, and so it became a point where every game felt like the finals. Mm -hmm. At home, because yeah. we had something, we had a legacy we had to protect. Who and sold you on? Excuse me. Who sold you on coming here? Um, the first people that I met to represent SIU was uh, Coach Allen Majors and Coach Payne. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they came and um, I was in Plan AU at the time, and it was in the summertime in Indianapolis, and I had a game, and I remember. You know, having like seven, eight dunks. It was just having fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the game, Coach Painter came up to me, and he was like, you can jump, huh? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> do a little bit. So he introduced himself, and he was like, hey. He was like, you know, we're very interested in you. You know, Coach Weber likes you. We came down. We want to bring you down for a visit. Yeah. Um, so they were some of the two familiar faces that I met. And then Coach Weber came to my high school, and make sure that my grades were right. So those, those are the first influences that I met. You played in every game as a freshman. When did you feel that you could play at this level? Was it then? I always had the confidence that I could play. It was a matter of feeling like um, I earned my spot and my position on the team. Because I never wanted anything given to me. You know, I always wanted to earn it. Um, so I think Freshman year we came in, we made a buzz, we made it to the NIT, um, played behind some some guys that were in the same position as me, Derek Tillman, mm -hmm. um, you know, Chris, Chris and those, Nell. yeah, Chris mm -hmm. Nell and those guys, Josh Cross. Um, so that that freshman year was amazing. Sophomore year we hit a little bit of a slump, a little bit. We had a winning record, but it wasn't as impressive. Um, I think going into my junior year is when I felt like, you know, this is the time. Like we're here, I'm here and we're going to make some noise. Don't you think it's ironic you and Weber are going in at the same time? Very ironic. Yeah. If you got it, if we gave you a dollar for every time he just squealed out, Jermaine, no, uh, not no. do it. <laughs> Get down the floor. You know, I can still hear it in my dreams now, man. But I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, I know it. Whatever I did on the court, I had to make it count because I was going to be hearing that voice for the rest of my time on those lines running sprints. I was going to be hearing that voice. Ran plays for you, Dan, right? Yeah, he did. He got to Indiana point. State. He ran plays for me. So it went from, no, JD, don't shoot it to make sure we get the ball in JD's hands. <laughs> hey, game is on the line. JD, you're going, you're going to have to make the shot. Sweet 16 was the best? Sweet 16. Sweet 16 year, um, it was also sweet. Uh, one of the best memories I had was um, during that wave. And like I say, this is around the time where um, we wasn't losing very much. We were getting mm -hmm. nationally ranked attention. Um, we, people were starting to begin, begin to notice what the heck a Saluki was. Um, so going into that junior year, man, it was like, it was amazing. It felt like we were in the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just the way that it played out. Um, of course, I wanted to go to the finals. But for us to, to be there, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to, a chance to wear 
it looks like we were down and out. It looks like, you know, all the chips were against us. Um, but we found a way. We found a way to pull it off. Found a way to win that, you know, the championship, the NBC championship. You know, go to the tournament, win the Sweet 16, beat some mm -hmm. schools that they didn't think we were going to beat. Thought Georgia was going to blast us. Thought Texas yeah. Tech and Bobby Knight was going to blast us. Um, so we pulled it off. And, and Georgia was blasting you. They were Up blasting 19, us. And then big game found us. They were blasting us, man. It was like, I can't, we can't, we yeah. can't go out like that. I can't let us go out like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was amazing, man. And just the whole feeling, it goes with the, with the vibe that I was telling you. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just all went together. I mean, I remember coming home um, on the plane after that Sweet 16 game. And just seeing like it felt like the whole town of Carbondale was waiting on us at the yeah, airport. Yeah, that, that was cool. That All was along so cool. the fence had signs <laughs> with our names. Go SIU, Saluki, you know, Dermot Willis, Kent. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was it was an amazing time, man. You could feel at that time you could feel the floor rumbling underneath your feet, mm -hmm. literally. You at the free throw line, you could feel the vibrations of the cheers and the stomps of the crowd and everybody cheering until we made that first basket. That's that's that, that was those were the times. You've always been politically correct about the final game of your career, the Missouri game in the NCAA tournament in 03 when they called the foul on you. Everything went up for grabs. Your coach went into a tirade publicly and privately. These are the best officials. They should make that call. Yeah. That block charge was a charge. You've been politically correct. Will you say now, yeah. Hall of Famer, it was a bad call? Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to admit it was a... <laughs> It was a bad call. It was a bad call. Um, that's one of those plays where, you know, it was the end of my career, senior year. You know, we've, we've done what we did to get there and to show people that, hey, SIU is here. Basketball at SIU and Carbondale is here. Um, that Sweet 16 year wasn't a fluke. We came back. We had a, another successful season, 27-4 senior year. And we had a chance to go almost back to the Sweet 16 again if we got past that game. Yep. So the way it played out, it came down to where um, we were one point away. And your hometown, too. And it just hit me. It was in Indy. It was in Indianapolis. Oh. I had all my family and friends. Oh. And um, I just remember so vividly that last play because um, I had a decision to make. And I was still had that dream. It still haunts me to today. It and it's like, at that point in time, should I put the game in the – referee's hands mm -hmm. or should I just took a chance and try to block that shot if I got a foul I got a foul mm -hmm. so in hindsight going back of course if I can rewind time I would have just try to challenge the guy um what was it, Ricky Paulden yeah yes. and I would have just mm -hmm. tried to block it but I mm -hmm. remember it seemed like he it was at the top of the key one-on-one -on -one with, with you know Darren Brooks who's a tremendous defender we all knew that mm -hmm. um he could defend multiple positions and I had a shooter in the corner so he got a slight advantage against DB he was coming right at the basket I definitely wasn't going to let him just have a free layup for the game. So it was like, get in a position, take a charge, try to block, a sh block the shot, mm -hmm. or do a stunt and fake at him and go back. Those are, those are my decisions. And believe it or not, I have to make those decisions within a second. Yeah. Yeah. And so I chose to get there and get my feet set, take a charge. I fell on the ground and closed my eyes. And all I heard was that whistle blow. And I opened my eyes up, and I even was cheering like, yeah, we got it. And they were like, ah, no, that's your fifth foul. Mm. Get out the game. Mm. So that's how it ended, man. It was a tough road. Um, but, I mean, I don't regret anything mm. about it because we had a heck of a run. It was a heck of a run, to be sure. And it was one of the great times in Saluki basketball history, and he had a lot to do with it. Yeah. Hall of Famer Jermaine Dearman, congratulations. Thanks, Happy for you. Appreciate it, Mike.